Hello everybody and welcome to chapter 1, an introduction to remote seals on pressure transmitters. Chapter 1 will definitely give you some interesting details about how our remote seals work and uh, anyway I'll present first the contents of the chapter so you can decide if you want to see the whole thing or just jump to a more advanced chapter about remote seal. Number one, we're gonna talk about what is a remote seal and basically what is his functionality and construction. Second, we will really tell how to use a remote seal and you're gonna see there are some cases that is mandatory. Finally, the most common types. Okay, what is a remote seal? A very simple way to put that is a way to uh, reflect the pressure that's in point A to a point B, separated by a, such a distance, L for instance. And uh, let's consider an initial tank here with a fluid and on the other side, a pressure sensor. And how to make the pressure sensor see the pressure in PA? Well, the most common way is really to install a pipe uh, the pipe will need to take the fluid to the sensor, a pressure sensor to the right. And, uh, once the, the situation is aesthetically balanced or stable, pressure in point B actually is going to be equal to that pressure in point A. Now let's consider we have a diaphragm that is a flexible membrane corrugated material. So uh, because of this corrugation and because it is a really flexible and thin membrane, uh, if we have this represented by this profile, if I put a little bit pressure to the right, very small dilocation, let's say, or movement to the diaphragm, uh, this will be done with very minimum effort, in the same way if I do from right to left. Now let's consider we want to separate really point A from point B, uh, not allowing the fluid go all the way to the pressure sensor. So for this situation, we can install this diaphragm in this position. And uh, after I do that, we need to consider what is really in this pipe, because if it's really gas, uh, a small movement from the diaphragm will not really uh, reflect the pressure point, point A to point B. Remember, the diaphragm moves very little, and if there is gas here, this will be compressible, so the pressure in this pipe here will really not reflect the pressure on PA. So and instead, if we put liquid in this pipe here, and uh, this is isolated with the diaphragm here, and considering the liquid and the pipe, they're not expandable, typically that's what happened, uh, a very small movement from the diaphragm will really ref reflect this pressure on the pressure set. Liquid will be a way to really uh, isolate a from B in a way that I still can sense the pressure in A through the diaphragm interface here. This is still a rudimentary remote seal. It's working as a remote seal because it's reflecting pressure A at pressure point B. However, we have some issues. Let's say heat. Uh, this pipe can expand and if there is a lot of volume of liquid here, this expansion can be really significant. And the pressure itself by the variation of temperature will make this a very lousy remote seal, right? So what to do here? Now, there is something we can think about. How about if we get the diaphragm and a little bit of the fluid 
and trap it with a circular flange here. So the flange will carry a little bit of fluid here, the diaphragm, but I still need to pass that pressure to the other point here, point B. So let's install a very thin pipe here, okay, that is called capillary. So a capillary will be really uh, be a pipe with very thin, uh, small diameter, and this consequently converts the volume on the top for a very low volume here. So even with temperature variations, the dilation of the fluid and even the material that is holding the fluid is going to be small. And very small variations of this volume can be absorber, let's say, for the little movement from the diaphragm and not reflecting in building pressure inside the capillary due to the heating uh, issue. All right. And at the same time, I still have the process A and, and the point uh, isolate from point B. Okay. So this is what we can call a way better remote seal. Now that we have a basic remote seal represented like that, and these flanges can be attached to the tank A, all right, and reflect pressure from A to B. Industrially talking, that's about what you're going to see. You're going to see a flange, a diaphragm, where this pressure is going to be sensed. The flange carry a couple of holes to bolts to be attached to the tank. And the capillarity will bring the pressure to the sensor that is installed remotely in a pressure transmitter. This is typically what we have, where we can see the details of the diaphragm. Uh, on the other side, that's typically what is done in, in a way if you put a lot of pressure, this diaphragm will sit in this corrugated uh, cut material here in a way not to deform extremely. And uh, on, on all this yellow will be filled up with the fluid that goes inside the capillary here and the capillary will bring uh, that contact with the remote point. You can see also that the capillary is protected by a corrugate uh, metal pipe. That's only a mechanical way to strengthen this connection. And finally, arriving to the pressure sensor. Now, from this situation, if we eliminate the cut, that's what we have. We have here a pressure transmitter actually it's a differential pressure transmitter, but one of the sides is connected to a remote seal. And the other side will depend on the application, what to do with that. You can also have another remote seal on the other side of this transmitter. So we have here the flange, the wet diaphragm. Why we call wet diaphragm? is because this is the part of the, the remote seal that touches the process. So this will be in contact really with your fluid that you are trying to, to measure pressure. Then we have the capillary, the pressure sensor that is part of the pressure transmitter. So now comes when to use a remote seal. We're going to show here some situations. One of them is fluid temperature. Let's say it's really higher than the transmitter and sensor uh, can support. So if the transmitter due to its sensor, or due to its electronics, cannot support a too high temperature, so you must use a remote seal. That will keep the transmitter in a fresher place while the remote seal can stand to higher temperatures. Another situation is that the transmitter uh, will suffer frequently replacements 
do to be installed in an aggressive environment. So if the environment is too aggressive, uh, maybe you want to use a special remote seal with special materials to reflect this pressure to the transmit in situations that you need to facilitate the cleaning process. So let's say you take in a pressure from some place that need to be constantly clean. You don't want to keep opening the transmitter for that. Instead, you remove the flange, wash the sensor here, the diaphragm, and put it back. Uh, number four, you really want to keep a distance from the intake to make it more accessible for reading or maintenance. Uh, situations that you also need to watch is, let's say your process has a lot of vibration and you don't want to submit the pressure transmitter for that situation. And uh, also this situation here that the fluid contains particles that can obstruct the sensor intake. So close to the pressure sensor here, the, the gaps are small and uh, they probably can accumulate this particle. Not talking that there are some uh, fluids that can build up uh, solidifying particles and getting sticky. So when this happens, the same thing. Uh, you don't want to keep opening a pressure transmitter to clean these things. It will be way easier using a remote seal. And finally, when you have explosion hazards, areas that you want to isolate from people, the remote seal will be very handy. Okay, now let's talk about most common types. Well, uh, there are many, but talking in the most common ones, this will be a very common situation that's called flanged remote seals. That's typically what we were seeing till now. Uh, the only thing is that this particular differential transmitter have one remote seal to each side of the sensor. Other situation will be a flanged remote seal with extension. You can see that the diaphragm has an extension to the flange. That extension facilitates to enter in a hole on the side of a tank and making the diaphragm to flush with the internal wall of the tank that will uh, diminish the uh, possibility to keep building up material because it's flush in the wall. Uh, another way is the sanitary remote seals where you have uh, clamps to hold and remove the remote seals easily for cleaning. It's very common in a food industry. Other one is will be the level transmitter, really dedicated to measure level. Is a flange also with the diaphragm in the middle there. In this situation, the transmitter uh, really is very close to the uh, remote seal and is actually stand solder in there. And still you have the connectivity with the capillary uh, from one to the other one, but it's very close. And uh, the main reason for that is to have a, a flange that make it easier to remove and then clean uh, the tank from time to time. And of course, for the same situation, you can have a sanitary level transmitter that will be place it uh, on place with a clamp or like I said before one or two bolts for easy of removal okay so here are probably the most typical ones there are more of course but we're gonna stop here and uh, consider this the introduction for remote seals thank you so much for watching and uh, keep looking for more tutorials